Hi there, my name is Eliza, and today we're going to dig into sandstone to better understand the geology of the Boise foothills. Let's get started by defining the term sandstone. What is a sandstone? Sandstone is a sedimentary rock, which means it forms at or near the surface of the earth. It's composed of sediments such as minerals or other rocks, and has been cemented and compacted or smushed and glued together over time. One of the ways that we categorize or name our sedimentary rocks is by grain size. When I use the term sandstone, I'm talking about the size of the sediments or pieces and not the composition or ingredients. A rock made up of sand-sized sediments or pieces will be labeled as a sandstone, while a rock with smaller sediments may be labeled as a silt or clay stone. So why do we have sandstone in the Boise foothills? Where did all of the sand or sediment come from? Boise is located in the western Snake River Plain, and this plain is between the Boise and Owyhee Mountains. About 15 million years ago, the western Snake River Plain was formed when the upper crust in this area was pulled apart, forming a broad valley between mountain ranges. Regional waterways such as rivers and mountain streams were diverted to the forming valley. This water flowed from high elevations in the mountains and transported sediment, rock, and debris downhill to the valley floor. Now we know why we have so much sediment in the valley. This sediment was later compacted and cemented or smushed and glued together to form the sandstone. The Boise Foothill sandstone has the same ingredients or composition as the granite we find in the Boise Mountains along the north side of the valley. This tells us that the sandstone sediment or ingredients traveled from the Boise Mountains down to the Boise area. Now let's take a look at a piece of sandstone from Table Rock, a geologic landmark in the Boise foothills. The image in the center is a piece of sandstone and the images surrounding it are examples of the minerals we find in the sandstone. The gray minerals are quartz. The white minerals are feldspar. Most people have not heard of feldspar, even though it is one of the most common minerals on the surface of the earth. Some examples of feldspar are moonstone, labradorite, and amazonite. The reflective platy minerals we find in the sandstone are variations of mica, and sometimes there are metals such as fool's gold or iron pyrite. Now that we've seen a sample from the Boise foothills, let's chat about how it formed. Here is a short explanation. As I mentioned, the buried sediments were compacted and cemented together, but what is unique is that the Boise foothill sandstone's formation was influenced by geothermal activity. When I use the term geothermal, I'm talking about heat that comes from inside the earth. Along the Boise mountains, there is hot water trapped in the rocks below the surface. Sometimes that hot water is able to reach the surface through cracks and breaks in the rock. The geothermal water along the Boise foothills reach the sediments near the surface and alter them to form a very durable and valuable rock. Finally, why is this information important? Why do we care? This sandstone not only tells us about the area's geologic history, but it's also part of Boise's history. The image on the upper left is an outcrop of sandstone, and the way it was deposited and its texture tell scientists that a long time ago there used to be a lake in the western Snake River Plain. Lake Idaho is a part of this area's geologic history, and here is a rendering from the Bureau of Land Management in the upper right-hand corner. The sandstone is also part of Boise's history. The sandstone from Table Rock pictured on the bottom left has been mined for over 100 years, but it's not something of the past. There is still an active mine on the top of Table Rock. A few local buildings are composed of the sandstone, and those are the Idaho State Capitol, Post Office on Bannock Street, and Boise High School. To finish up today, let's dig in and write in our nature journal on what we've learned and experienced. Find your journal or a piece of paper. You can use a laptop, but if you like to use color or collage, this will be challenging. Record your experiences and what you know about the sedimentary rock sandstone. You can include images, color, or even a small object. Here is a list of questions that can be answered. 
If you're not very familiar with the geologic landmarks in your area, you can use Google or check out your local geological surveys website. Don't forget to include why the landmark is important to your community and what role it plays in the local ecosystem. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. You guys rock.